Make sure you guys stand till the end because if you do one simple mistake after replacing the brake pads, you can easily crash your vehicle. So make sure to stand till the end and we'll explain what it is. Hey guys, welcome back to Auto Repair guys. Thank you guys for watching and subscribing to the channel. Today will be super helpful for you guys to any of you having a Ford C-Max guys and you need to remove or replace uh, rear brake pads. It might work on uh, Ford uh, C-Max uh, Ford and Ford Escape as well. That generation from 2012 to 2018. But you need to verify the torque specs, part numbers for your specific vehicle guys because uh, some models may differ and uh, some escapes may use different part numbers and different torque specs. So stay with us, we'll share everything about C-Max today torque specs brake pads road replacement all that will be covered in this video today before we start let me just tell you a little bit about us every single car we get at the garage we try to make at least two to three hundred free repair videos why simply because our mission at the shop is to save you as much money as we can all we need in return please subscribe to the channel like the video that way we can keep providing this free information to you now if you need to buy new brake pads brake rotors anything for a really good price guys for your car check out the link in the description of the video below you can get them for a super good price and quick shipping as well so let's go ahead and start on it now so first step we'll need to remove the rear wheel now we jack the vehicle up okay with the jack and we put jack stand as well always use a jack stand because if one single seal fails in that jack guys what will happen okay you are going to be crushed under the vehicle so always use jack stand now <coughs> we have uh, the two here we're going to remove the wheel wheel nuts and uh, then we can remove the wheel let's see if it's going to come off easy because we personally have not removed it in a long time and as a result guys what can happen okay it can get stuck to the hub but i think i just saw it move so that's a good sign perfect now <coughs> right here i want to show you how bumpy the tire is okay there is a problem <coughs> and this is most likely due to a bad bearing or bad alignment check this thing out okay you can see that most likely guys it's a bad bearing or bad alignment on your vehicle right there so that can create quite a bit of noise as well okay uh, because uh, <coughs> actually uh, you can see the tire okay it has low and high spots okay i'm trying to focus on that okay you can see low high spot and that can create noise as well you can see practically you have low and high spots on this one so we can get it out of the way and we can continue with the next step so next step uh, we are going to get here zip ties okay uh, heavy duty zip ties will work really good uh, because uh, we'll need to remove the <coughs> the brake caliper and when you remove that brake caliper you don't want to let it hang on the brake line because you can damage it lose your brakes and you can get in a serious accident so uh, now on the back side we have a couple caps okay that you remove dust caps and uh, one on the bottom side here as well okay you can see right here now inside we have a one wrench which is okay this one is uh, what is that on six millimeter i believe okay i'm trying seven millimeter allen wrench yep perfect seven millimeter allen wrench and we're going to go ahead and get that bolt loose now all right now <coughs> i know this that it started spinning right here so let me see if everything's good yep it's coming off and this one you can pull it out okay perfect now we're going to remove the bottom one okay you can see what we're talking about right there you can get the idea so 14 marks and uh Ford Escape guys, okay that generation from year 2012 to year 2018-19 uh, they're practically built on the same platform so almost all of the procedures for repairing suspension uh, will be about the same some of the, even the engine components will be about the same because <coughs> unless you have a different model but most of them will be that way always verify now we need to remove the spring okay right here for the okay for the brake pads now we can slide this one out gently slide it out okay it will be stuck 
but you just need to move it around and it will eventually come out because you have a wear on the lip sum now we need to be careful because we have the springs for the pads there so okay let's see okay just wiggle it a little bit and it comes out Make sure the emergency brake is not on at that point, you need to have the phone tire supported so the vehicle doesn't roll on you because otherwise you will not be able to uh, to remove them. Let's see, I want to see, okay, that cable is what is causing the trouble guys, okay, that cable is putting quite a bit of pressure, that's for the emergency brake, okay, for the hand brake practically, uh, so <coughs> we need to make sure, okay. We need to come on this side first because there is quite a bit of pressure there and I was thinking maybe we can disconnect it if we have to and our brake pad just fell. So we need to see, okay, it's, it will be good, it's just the lip right here that didn't allow us, okay, to come out. So we're going to <coughs> go ahead and tie it now right here so it doesn't just hang on the brake cable, brake line okay just like that so we can continue with the next step now next we're going to get WD-40 rust penetrating spray we're going to apply where the rotor meets the bearing the hub okay let's go ahead do that to make sure we didn't spray some on the camera so you can see clearly okay we will let it soak now we need to uh, find actually guys okay let me come on this side we need to find okay tools that will fit right here so we can remove the bracket for the brake okay the one on top right here and the one over here so i believe this is a 13 millimeter ford likes to use i think uh, 10 13 15 17 quite often i've seen uh, now suspension everything looks good a little bit rusted but not bad at all so let's find the two okay and we'll continue so 13 millimeter okay not like that not like that let's get the bigger two if we have to or because it's going to come loose okay and we're going to round the bolt then we're in big trouble we need to buy a new bolt okay so that's what we're working on now that's the battery tray for your car Okay, if you have a C-Max, that's your battery tray right here. So this bolt is coming loose now. We need to do the one on top. And then it will come out. Okay, perfect. Okay, let's do the one on top now. We'll find the torque specs and we'll have the torque specs for the rear brakes as well. So you know what to do. Perfect, came out. Now let's continue with the next step. So we soaked the rear brake roller. Now what we're going to do, we'll get the rubber hammer. Okay, we will, only with the rubber hammer, we'll tap on it. What we'll do, we'll turn it. Okay, let's turn it now and tap from the back side again. It might be rusted really bad. Okay, let's come on this side now, a little bit on this side. Okay, still, still waiting. Now we might need to spray a little bit more if we, uh, if it's not coming out, and uh, let it. Okay, let it soak. Now we'll get underneath. Okay, w one second. It came out. Slow now. Okay, perfect. You can see all that rust. 
coming out now that's the disc roller right here okay you can see we can remove it just like that later we we'll recommend to get sandpaper clean here everything really good and clean your roller if you're installing the old one if you're putting a new one don't worry about that but with sandpaper you can clean it really good you can see wipe it and you won't have that deposits and rest that prevents the roller from setting correctly okay and we are actually in the process of developing the uh, replacing the bearing you can see this one has noise now this is guys the uh, the roller let me explain something about the roller guys when you replace new brake pads okay uh, we were expecting a shipment today it didn't come so uh, unfortunately it will come next week uh, but uh, you have two options to replace the uh, disc rotors when you replace brake pads or get your rotors guys take them to a parts parts store like uh, if you're in the US Napa O'Reilly uh, advanced auto parts okay all of them uh, they resurface rotors what they do they cut the top layer they make it smooth and even because it could be wrapped it could has uh, it could have some wear and uh, grooves from the brake pads so it needs to be uh, resurfaced or new roller installed every time you replace new brake pads so uh, we'll go ahead show you how to uh, put it uh, put it together now and uh, we'll continue with the next step so you need to go ahead and make sure okay you can clean the roller as well okay to make sure it fits we put a new bearing on ours and in the meantime we're gonna put brakes but they didn't bring the brakes so we'll have to redo the job soon but uh, the concept is practically the same if you're installing new parts so you get the idea now we're going to get the brake mount on the back okay get the two bolts tied and uh what we have to do okay on those let's see now some people and sometimes you thread locker on those some i personally always use thread locker why the removable thread locker because i don't want my brake bolts to get loose so that's my opinion guys you can follow the manual for your specific make and model but okay let me see okay so if we lift it up a little bit down okay right there i'll catch one of them okay right there one is in now the second one's getting there so i will share the torque specs with you in just a second so we can use the torque wrench and get those tight so we have the torque wrench set for these two bolts guys the big bolts they need to be for the mount for the bracket they need to be uh, 70 newton meters for our specific make and model here as well configuration uh, that's a click type torque wrench when you hear a click stop immediately not to over torque them perfect now the one on top as well okay let's retorque both of them again one more time okay great and now perfect let's continue okay with the next one now uh, next thing we need to explain okay how we're going to compress the brake caliper uh, because otherwise you will not be able to install it the thicker if you install new roller it will be thicker the brake pads will be thicker so we need to compress it now it's recommended to clean your seal really good and the piston as well because it's going to compress there and you don't want to have uh, dust and dirt stuck in it some people will use even brake cleaner uh, but you need to get the one that's safe actually for the seal okay don't use one that's not safe for a seal because if you do what can happen okay you can you can damage it so if you check it in, okay everything looks good here so uh, what you need to do you have different okay different options here the one that really fits good on ours okay this is for the right hand side you can see our age this is the one that gets and you need to find a fitting that fits on yours for instance this one okay fits great on ours so we install it there we need to get a plate okay and that plate okay needs to go on the brake caliper too okay like that and now what you need to do okay you need to turn it until okay one second no nope. okay until we align everything here really good okay nope okay like that perfect now 
what do we need to do okay we need to screw that to get the plate out of it now so the plate is installed it's tight okay and now we're going to go uh, I, I believe on those was clockwise Make sure your emergency brake is not on, okay? Because if it is, it's not going to work, guys. Okay, and you can see how it compresses it, okay? It's getting all the way in. So that's it. It compressed it practically all the way in. Now we need to pre-loosen it, okay, right here. So you cannot go this way. We need to get a wrench if it doesn't go, okay? I just okay got it there let me see if we can okay we'll need to uh, get okay we'll need to get the one wrench for here so we can unscrew it let me just get that one okay so we can do that see which size it is and we'll continue okay it actually kept going by hand perfect Okay, and the piston is compressed all the way. So, <clears throat> now, we're ready to go ahead and remove that. Okay, the brake, uh, uh, the uh, hand brake cable actually holds it pretty good, uh, but be careful. Uh, some uh, manuals recommend to disconnect the hand brake cable, but uh, I think it's doable without it. We'll apply brake grease where the brake pad contacts, guys. Okay, the caliper and where it slides right here. So we'll apply a little bit of brake grease, the same to the other one. Okay, and a little bit to the sides and a little bit on the back side as well. Those are still pretty, pretty good pads. Probably original ones as well. So let's go ahead. Okay, pull to the side. Okay, the other way. Okay, like that. We're going to install them, great. The one with the spring on our model goes on the inside. Then we have one more here. Perfect, you can see the two pads. Now we're going to go ahead and install the caliper. Now the caliper we have played because we compressed it all the way. Uh, you should stand till the end because if you don't do one thing right, you can really easily crash your vehicle. So the guide bolts for the caliper to the mount, okay, we're going to grease those as well. Very, very, very thin layer, okay, and we're going to go ahead and install them now. So we need to align everything really good, go in the seal. Those are with the 7mm Allen wrench. We'll start them by hand. Then we will install the bottom one, same thing as well. We'll go ahead and do that. Perfect, now what do we need to do? Uh, we need to go ahead, okay, uh, get them tight and we're going to use the torque range for our specific model here and make. It requires 35 newton meters. Once you hear the click, you need to stop immediately, otherwise you can easily over torque them. So, yeah, let's go ahead, do that. So again, once you hear a click from the torque wrench, stop immediately. That's it. One more on top. This one, not so much room to turn it, so we might need to go that way. That's it. 
Now, it's a good idea to retor both of them. Check them one more time. Always a good idea. Don't rem don't forget to put the caps on. Okay, perfect. Now this one here. That's it. So, now something super important. After you put your caps, guys, you need to go inside. Okay, and you're going to be pushing that brake paddle once you're done here until you have no play in the brakes. Let's install the spring now. So install the spring on the bottom here first, then on the other side on bottom. Okay, and that's a little bit tricky, but you need to get it in. Okay, on one side then install it. Okay, on the bottom and make sure you hold it good and ah, almost in. If you have pliers, it will help you guys to just guide it which way to go. Okay, perfect. This is it. Now we need to go inside. One person will be pumping the brake paddle. Okay, let me show you what we'll be doing there. Okay, you need to get there and pump that brake paddle as much as you can. Okay, just go ahead, pump, pump, pump. Okay, and you want to make sure the brake is not on. Okay, hold the brake now. Press the brake paddle all the way, make sure it's holding. Okay, everything's good to make sure the brakes work because otherwise you have soft spongy pedal the first two, three times you press it. So you start the car, put in let's say in drive or reverse and the first two, three times you press the brake paddle, the brakes will not work. So you need to get that play out of the caliper that we already compressed. So hopefully the video will be helpful. Thank you for watching and see you guys next time.